What's up you guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're playing more Flight Simulator and I've been having a great time with this game. I don't know about you but yeah it's just ticking all the right boxes for me at this particular point in time. It's been a long time coming for it to come to console and it's great to be able to play it on Xbox especially with it being included on Game Pass but having said that if you haven't already subscribed to the channel I'd love it if you could go ahead and do that and hit that notification bell if you want to keep up to date with all the videos that I'm doing and also if you could hit that like button if you enjoy this video that would be a great help. But today we're going to be taking a flight from Durham Tees Valley to Newcastle and this is a, f a route that I've been flying um, practicing I guess really enjoying just kind of getting used to the plane and well the planes that I've been trying out so today we're in the Textron Aviation Beechcraft um, King Air which is another um, thing that I've been really enjoying about this game this particular plane but I want to show you something today that I think might be um, interesting for you if you're playing on Xbox because I have added um, something to the repertoire which is a mouse so here we are then guys in Durham Tees Valley and we'll click ready to fly. Um, I believe where it's going to have placed us here is on one of the parking ramps. Yeah, so we're away from the actual runway itself, although we will be joining the runway very shortly. I think what we're going to do firstly here is just get into the cockpit and I'm going to bring up something here, which um, something that I've seen people do on PC. Um, I mean, you can do this from memory, I guess, but as a pilot, really, I think what you would be doing before you fly, before you start the engine and that type of thing, is to follow a checklist. Now, the reason why I want to talk about the mouse control today is I've been using, I plugged in this mouse, it's a very cheap mouse that I bought off Amazon some time ago, it was about £7. It's a Logitech one, it's, it's one of the cheapest ones I think you can buy, but plugged it into the xbox and i was toying around with it and just trying it and i will say this for the cockpit controls it's fantastic for the menu controls it's fantastic it's far better than clicking down um like that and using the left stick it's just far more accurate and yeah i would definitely recommend doing this if you've been playing this game I think it'll be a game changer for you. But for today we're gonna start the engine up um as you can see at the moment as we're parked here um the engine is off all of our power is off, so we're going to start by following this checklist through to get the engine started. So if you are planning on doing this, don't be too threatened by it. I mean, what I will say is if you click on the items, it does give you a kind of description here. And it also, if you click here, it'll point you in the right direction. So as you can see here, this is the parking brake. It's highlighted it blue. So we can see that it's in the on position. So what we will now do is click tick item. Now, if you haven't discovered this, it's a great little sim element and I would, for realism, I would recommend giving it a go at least once and seeing if you like it. Um, you can, of course, just jump on the runway and crack on with it. I mean, it's totally up to you. But what we're going to do now is take a look at the power levers. So what we're going to do is be over here and what it's saying is that these power levers should be idle. So if we look at these now, um, we can see that they're in the idle position. Um, you can click on them as well, like so. The only thing that I would say is if you click on it, it's very easy to move it. So you know, might have a bit of a problem getting it back to zero, in which case you'll have to press B or A on the controller in order to make that very easy to get back to zero. Um, oh, I've just switched the trim a little bit. Um, that's not ideal. I'll, what I'll do is I'll just switch that back. You see we're on 12% trim there. Um, I'll just roll that back to, to around about... We'll put it on 0% to start off with. It's a very... I think I did that last time when I was messing around with this. Okay, so our power levers are in idle. We'll click yes. Um, propeller RPM levers. They want to be max RPM. So this is these ones here. So we'll switch these to... If we can actually... There we go. We'll switch these to 100%. And there we go. So they're ready. And we can click next now our condition levers which are these ones so this is our mixture levers we're going to pull these back to cut and so that they cut out of the the initial startup and our battery switch which um if i can remember where this one is battery switch is it this one set master switch we'll put that on 
So this is going to fire up our electric systems. We'll click tick for that one and then we'll go next. We're going to take a look at starting our engine. So this is our steps to starting up each en engine. As you can see, it starts off with the right and then it switches over to the left. So to start off with, we're going to start off with the right engine. So we're going to um, switch the right ignition switch on like so. And then we're going to go to our right. System test. Okay. okay, thank you for that. What we're going to do is go over to our right condition lever because if we look, we can see our engine starting up. We want to get some fuel in the mix. So what we're going to do is go over here and we're going to push this up a little bit like this. Increase the mixture of fuel in there. I'd say to about anything under 50% really is about right. Um, what we'll do is go next to our ITT and N1 monitor. I'm not too sure what that means entirely at the moment, but by clicking that you can see that that's increasing. And also next our oil pressure. The reason why I'm not ticking these by the way is because we're going to do the same f thing for the left engine in just a moment. So our oil pressure's around about what it should be. And we're now going to um, go back to this. Uh, no, sorry. Apologies. We're going to switch off our ignition switch. We don't need that one anymore. There we go. And now we can push our condition lever all the way forward and get that mixture nice and full like so. As this engine's just coming up to full, full um, tick over now. Um, our right generator also needs to be on. If we can go over here. I believe... Let's see if I can see this. So that's... Yeah, right generator. There we go. That's that on. And then we're going to follow the same procedure for the left engine. So back to the top. We're going to switch our starter on like so. We're going to go over to our condition lever. We're going to push our left stick forward. Where's my mouse gone? We're going to push this up to about 40, just less than 50. Um, we're going to check our monitor up here. So as you can see now, this is coming up nicely. It should be up to around about here. And then we are going to, next, we are going to um, check our oil pressure. And that's about where it should be right now, followed by... A right ignition and engine. Um, we're going to switch that switch again once this comes up to around about 50%. Just give this chance to come up. Um, it looks like it's sort of hovering there. I'll tell you what. We'll switch this. Oh no, that's our last thing, isn't it? The generator. Um, where's this switch again? Oh, no. It's the on switch that needs to be off here. We want to start a switch off. And then we'll go across to our mixture. Increase this all the way up. That should get us going there. Yeah, I can see the, the power's coming up nice, nicely now to a tick over. Followed by our generator switch back over here. Like so. Okay, so we can tick these off. They're all done. We're now going to go to our after engine startup. So we want to switch on our avionics master switch. Um, trying to think where this one is now. It's a single switch on its own. Is it this one? Avionics on. And the next thing we're going to do is put our lights on. I'll tell you what, we'll tick this. And if we go to this one, it'll show us all the lights that we need to put on. So landing lights on. I think as we get going, really, we should learn more about what these lights mean because we may, may be a thing where we switch the landing lights off once we're up in the sky. Not entirely too sure, to be honest with you, how all that works. Um, okay. And finally, we can release our parking brake, but we're not going to do that just yet. What we're going to do is um, we're going to switch to a better camera to start off with. Um, I still haven't quite figured out how to get out of that view quickly. I think with a keyboard we might be able to do that best and I'm going to probably have a go at looking at that at some point. But I quite like this landing view because it gives you a good view over the sort of um, over the dashboard as it were. We'll hit this just to acknowledge. 
these ground control guys look like they're ready for us to make a move. I think what we'll do is um, we'll get in touch with the ground on the old radio and we'll tune, tune the T-side ground like so. We will request to taxi and we're going to depart west. We can only depart west from this airport. T-side ground, Beechcraft Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra Kilo with Sierra request taxi for takeoff west departure. Beechcraft Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra Kilo taxi to in halt short of runway 23 using taxiway Alpha. Contact tower on 119 or decimal 805 when ready. Superb. We'll acknowledge that. Taxiing hold short runway 23 using taxiway Alpha Beachcraft Golf Sierra Kilo. Excellent. Right, let's have a look. See where we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is reverse slightly. Um, I think by doing this we'll just reverse the engine and switch off the parking brake. Oh, a little bit all over the place there. I kind of expected it to go forward a little faster. There we go. I really do feel like by using the mouse though, we are treating it much more like a sim. As opposed to just sort of jumping behind the, the, uh, the stick and just flying basically um, which there's nothing wrong with doing that don't get me wrong but I'm really enjoying the sort of sim elements that's involved in using the mic using the mouse like that should I say so what we want to do is get in position on the runway now and then we're going to contact the tower and request takeoff clearance which should be fine. We've got taxi clearance so we can put ourselves on the runway without too much issue. As I say, at Teesside here, which is now actually called Teesside International Airport, I believe that it's Durham Tees Valley, still named that, which is the previous name um, on this game. But yeah, there's only one runway and you can only take off to the west, so... It's kind of pointless requesting to take off to the east, although that would be much better for us, generally speaking. I'm just going to slow down a little bit here and bring up our map. Come on. There we go. Get our map on screen like so. So to get a feel for the direction that we're going to be going in. We'll also get our um, radio back up because we're going to need that in a sec. Okay, so we're making pretty good progress here. And um, what I'll do when we get up in the skies, I'll probably put a couple more cuts in, just to make it a little bit sort of smoother. Um, slow down a bit here. See if it wants us to progress onto the runway. I've gone a bit too far. Although, um, by Going beyond there, we can now request takeoff clearance, which we'll do now. Excellent. Superb. Okay, so we're ready to go. We're cleared. I think we can close this now. For now, anyway. And we're going to line ourselves up. We're making a nice little roll forward here. Which we're going to apply full power in just a second. Get ourselves going just straight off. Probably not going to use any flaps for takeoff. Um, and just ease it just nicely up into the sky. This, this is quite a long runway. But let's see how we get on anyway. Right, we'll give it a bit of power now. And get moving. Shortly after takeoff, we'll be heading up north and heading towards Newcastle. This thing wants to pull to the right, left. 
Yeah, we've got a decent bit of speed now. We can start to pull back. Pull our gear in. Little bit of a sort of shaky takeoff in a. I can see that steady climbing now, but I felt as if we were sort of um, a little bit jerky there. Still not 100% comfortable with the stick on the joy pad, to be honest with you. Okay, let's see if we can. Uh, Let's see if we can um, acknowledge this frequency change with the mouse. There we go. Done. So another good thing about flying like this is you can still fly, sort of holding the controller while while operating the mouse. So yeah, it makes it a little bit easier in that way instead of having to sort of click and then allowing the uh, allowing the computer to take over, allowing the Xbox to take over, should I say? Losing a bit of altitude there. We'll pull around again. We want to be climbing and turning. Still haven't sort of perfected that, to be honest with you. But we are heading north now, at least. It's a nice shot. Very, very nice shot of us taking off. There's our airport. We're going to sort of trim it off here. So flying over these fields here, this is very much close to home for me. Um, I'd love to be able to find my house at some point, but yeah, I think it's sort of... Um, much more over there, much more east from here, sort of in the in the more sort of um, populated area. This looks like a lot of farmland here, which there is a lot of farmland in this sort of direction. So if that was the A1, then that's potentially Sedgefield there, although there should be a horse racing track, um, which I can't see, so maybe it isn't. Okay, we're up to about 4,000 feet now. I didn't want to get that high. Um, we'll try to level off a little bit more with trim and I'll drop the engine back a bit more. But yeah, I like this view. Just being able to see over the uh, see over the controls a little bit more. Seeing, seeing over the control desk a little bit more is, is, a, is a nice feature. How are we doing for altitude? So we are coming down a bit still. I'm just going to trim up a little bit. So yeah, we can we could do it on the mouse as well here if we wanted to. Just over here. Try and level us out a little bit. Still haven't found out how to invert the look, you know, on the right stick. I think that would be a, a nice feature for me, particularly just to be able to invert that. We'll bring us around a little bit more now, just to come head head more north. It's a nice little practice run for me. Um, two airports that I'm fairly familiar with. Especially Newcastle out the two actually, even though I live closer to um even though I live closer to Teesside. But here we go, we're heading out to the coast here. We'll have a quick look on the have a quick look on the outside view here as you can see. Very, very beautiful. We are losing a little bit of altitude again. Could do with trimming that a little bit more there. Keep it nice and tidy. Turn just a little bit. Um, I'll tell you what we'll try and do right now. We'll try and contact Newcastle. Because we're not that far away. Nearest airport, Newcastle. Change to Newcastle Tower. Um, request full stop landing.
We're going to acknowledge this pattern entry. And that's beautiful. So we have re we have requested that touchdown, and that's possible. It's now painted on the screen for us our approach because it's a patterned entry. Um, there's another flight coming in here right now on the map. Ah, oh, we could see it there for a moment. Where's it gone? Switch back to GPS tracking. Oh, there's the there's the flight down there. Wonder if they're coming into Newcastle as well. Just trying to make sense of this patterned approach that it's given us here. Looks a little bit odd from this angle. Usually do come in from the east. Um, looks very weird. Looks very weird. Let's just double check. Let's just double check this, guys, because I'm not entirely too sure. That doesn't look right to me at all. I don't know. Were we tuned into the wrong Newcastle there? I don't know. I'm second guessing myself now. Let's go with the tower. Request full stop landing. We're going to come back round again, guys, because we're too close now, ready to start our landing procedure. We'll trim up. Okay, fine. We are low here. And we'll acknowledge we'll acknowledge this one. Make straight in runway two five beach craft golf Sierra Kilo. Okay, let's have a look and see how that look see how look this one looks. Okay, that's better. That's how it should look. I'm not too sure what happened there. Um, but we'll swing back round here. There's another plane not too far away from us. I do wonder if they're coming in as well. Um, when I've attempted this run a few times, there's been KLM flights coming in. Um, so that, that could make it interesting. Losing a bit of altitude here, just as I'm sort of um, releasing the controls a little bit too much. Sort of relying a little bit too much there on the trim. What we'll do is we'll just ease off the power here. And we're going to engage some flaps. Just flying in nicely here now. Trim down a bit more. Now we don't want to lose too much speed. I think the last time I came in on this run um, was very much sort of a little bit too um, slow. So I don't want to lose too much here. I'm going to engage full flaps and I'm going to trim down. We are, I don't know, what, when you can see that turn red there, that means that we are going too fast. And as you can see, as the speed reduces here, we are now, um, it's now turned blue, which means that we're at the right speed. Seems like we've got another small aircraft circling. Um, probably isn't KLM. I'm not too sure why that aircraft started circling round, but as you can see, we're once again slightly too fast. We're going to pull back on our trim a little bit, level ourselves out a little bit, which allows us a little bit more manual control. Um, what I don't want to do is to be sort of out of line with the runway, which I have a ten tendency to do as well. Excellent. We're cleared to land, so we can bring up the... Where's my menu gone? There it is. Right, okay. If I can acknowledge this one. Near to land, runway two, five beach craft, Gulf, Sierra Kilo. 
we go sorted. So we cleared to land and we'll close that. So one thing I will say guys, I still haven't done the tutorials yet. I really should. Um, I was watching a few videos on YouTube which has kind of helped me to understand the flaps and trim. Um, I'm going to try and pull back on the trim a little bit here because I don't want to be too low. I'll trim up a bit more. You really do need to allow the, the sort of... Um, whatever changes you make to take effect um, because they don't they don't take immediate effect that's for sure as I pull back on the trim there as you can see it's not taking immediate effect I'm going to slow the engine a little bit more you can see the runway now dead ahead we're nicely lined up we're a little bit low I'm going to pull a little bit more trim a little bit um, what I want to do is not be too low because there's some trees that we've got to get over first as well Flying pretty low over people's houses here as well. Um, do our best to sort of keep above, keep above the tree line. Twelve percent trim. I'm going to bear that in mind and see how we get on with that. Um, I'm hoping for a nice landing here, a nice smooth one. We'll see how we get on. We're going pretty fast, although we are within our sort of um, limits, as you can see. He's off on the power a little bit here. And this is looking okay, although we are we are a little bit low. We're a little bit low. Going to ease back again on the throttle here. Oh, we don't want to be skimming these lights. We're fairly low. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Let's cut the power. Oh, that was nice. Reverse the engines. Oh, I'm well pleased with that one. Well pleased. Brake a little bit as well. Okay. Pick up the throttle a little bit. We don't want to be going too slow. So we're just being requested to exit the runway as soon as we can. Um, let's just have a word with the control tower. If we can actually get the menu to come up. There we go. So yeah, I just need to be a little bit more precise, I think, with that one. But um, let's see if we can... Okay, so we're being requested to turn next taxiway, so we will exit ASAP, and hopefully then we can contact ground. See if we can get a parking spot sorted. Make a nice little progress here, guys. As I say, I'm, I really like the way this plane handles. I'm getting used to the landings on this plane. I really still need to do the tutorials, though. I think I might learn something there that I don't know about. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Looks like we're parking at ramp 24. We'll get ourselves across here. It's KLM flight there by the looks of things. Right, we'll cut the throttle. Look to make a nice turn in here like this. He's down on the brakes a little bit. Brake a bit here. And we will stop. Parking brake on.
we will attempt to kill the engine here. Um, what we'll need to do is, if it will allow us to do it, is to make that invisible. And I believe these generators need switching off. And there is a couple of other switches, I believe. Hold on. Well, we can kill the engine basically by pulling back on these mixtures, like so. And also killing the propeller revs, like that. And we'll just adjust them all the way back. Should cause our engines to stop nicely. There we go. And what we will do now is to kill the power. I think we'll end the mission by doing that. Let's see. I think by switching off this one. There we go. So there we, we're done with this one, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed that one. If you enjoyed it, please do leave me a like. Our flight time was around about 18 minutes, which is about right for that run. So we didn't do too badly at all. As I say, I'm really having a great time with this King Air. And let me know please in the comment section if you're enjoying this game and also which planes you've flown which ones you enjoy i think i'm going to spend quite a bit of time flying this one personally although there is a number of other planes including the jumbo which i would love to become good at flying let me know guys if you enjoyed this video by hitting that like button and i want to say thanks so much for coming through and i'll catch you guys again soon